Today we're going to be working on a 2003 Mitsubishi Outlander. We're going to be replacing the downstream O2 sensor. First off, you need to know the location of the electrical connection for this O2 sensor, which unfortunately is underneath the seat. If we come through back here, the seat fully extended, you'll see there is a little cutout right here and that is where the connection for the O2 sensor is which is why we're probably gonna have to remove the seat in order to remove the carpet in a way where we can actually see uh, the connection and remove it before we disconnect the O2 sensor from the uh, tailpipe. Alright once you got the four bolts that hold the seat on, which are located here, here, and there. Well, two of them in the back are bolts, the two in the front are nuts. Then you'll have better access to this cable and you can just tip this chair backwards. You don't actually have to take it out. And we're gonna disconnect this cable right here. Now there's a little pocket you can get your hand under on this side and get a better view of this. Now you know this is your downstream because it's got four pins in a row. Your upstream will be a square. So with this undone, you will be able to feel a grommet that is uh, creating a little barrier that prevents you from uh, getting water in the passenger side bay here you're going to need to push that grommet through and I can't really show you because it's underneath the carpet here but all right it's completely doable without tearing up your carpet here I found that if you're having trouble pushing the grommet through with your finger because there's going to be three little prongs I'll show you in a second but you just kind of slide this screwdriver through and help push that grommet through you'll be able to feel it with your hands all right, we are looking at the underside of the vehicle from the passenger side. The front is to our right. And just after the catalytic converter, you'll see the downstream O2 sensor. Now right here is the hole for the grommet that's underneath our carpet. That's what we're gonna be shoving our new wire through. But for now, just going to pull this one out and then you will notice these little fork thingies that just kind of bend that are holding the cable on there and this one was kind of strangely hooked around but these will come undone like such and then this just pulls free. And now we are free to remove the O2 sensor. Now this O2 sensor has been in here for quite some time. So we're gonna use some breakaway and let it soak on the threads first. Don't be afraid to use a liberal amount. We're gonna let it sit and then what we're gonna do is use a little bit of heat and instead of using an O2 sensor socket uh, we're going to be using a 7 8 inch box wrench because there's really not a whole lot of room back here to fit a wrench so we're kind of limited on the tools we can use for extraction putting it in is a different matter but uh, it's better when removing to have full contact because these O2 sensors aren't really made with like super durable metal and they tend to round out after using a lot of force on them. So uh, having full contact is much, much better of an idea. All right, since we can't get our wrench over the grommet, we're just gonna cut the wire since we're replacing it anyway. All right, we got our map gas. And
Je vais prendre. Alright, you can actually see the uh, O2 sensor get hot. We're going to see if we can break it free. Ha <laughs> hey, ha! Yep. Right. We now have access to the hole where we can install our new O2 sensor. So this is our new O2 sensor. Uh, this one does not come pre-applied with anti-seize, but it does come with the anti-seize. Got some copper anti-seize right here, and we're just going to smooth this on the threads. You don't need to use this whole entire stick of it, but once we get some schmoo on here, we're going to torque the new O2 sensor into 35 foot-pounds foot pounds, or 47 newton meters. This is all the anti-seize you need. Try not to get it on the O2 sensor itself and this should go in quite nicely now. Alright, so we're just going to screw our new O2 sensor in place by hand and then we're going to take our torque wrench that is set to the appropriate torque specs. I'm going to fit it over with an O2 sensor socket. And we're going to turn it until we hear our torque wrench click. There we go. All right, so now we have to feed the cable end of our wire through the hole in the carpet which we will access to and get access to later and we're going to put this grommet in place which you gotta be careful not to cut yourself on this metal here this is not the same style grommet as the stock O2 sensor. This is just a pure rubber one instead of the one that clips in place. It's a little more difficult to get in, but she'll get in there. There we go. Just like that. And then we take the cable right here that was held in with these two little bendy parts. We bend them back. And this one was bent underneath right here. And there we go. We are done on the underside and now can complete our connection on top side. All right, so feeling the bulge where uh, the cable is, you can tell it's right over here. We're gonna sh stick our hand through this hole. And we're going to direct the cable to where the female end is. And just like that, she's in. Now we can put our seat back and clean up our work. And the last thing you want to do is just get your scan tool and take a look at bank one sensor two and check its voltage and make sure it's within the acceptable range. You're aiming for 0.045 volts. Drive it around a bit. Make sure you're in closed loop mode and that your engine is up to temperature. And uh, if all goes well, hopefully yours is within range. Mine is a little higher than I'd like to see, but that's a new scan, a new uh, O2 sensor, and it should be giving me more accurate data than before.